How young Sheldon finally got to that heartbreaking moment, endings are always really difficult spoiler alert, the following interview discusses events from the Young Sheldon episode A New Home and a Traditional Texas Torture, streaming on Paramount Plus as of May 10. We knew it was going to happen, since it was foretold on The Big Bang Theory, but that didn't make it any easier to say goodbye to one of Young Sheldon's original cast members. In the final moments in the second of two episodes airing back-to-back -back on May 9, the Cooper family received word that curmudgeon patriarch George Cooper, Lance Barber, had died of a heart attack. The fate of George dying at this point in Sheldon Cooper's journey does goes back to the The Big Bang Theory, on which we learn that adult Sheldon, played by Jim Parsons, who narrates Young Sheldon, and is set to appear in next week's finale episode alongside Mayan Bialik, lost his father at the age of 14. That's the current age of prodigy Sheldon, Ian Armitage, in the prequel series, and while producers had said this major death would be addressed in the show's final season, they had not said exactly when it would happen. Now that this heartbreaking loss has happened, young Sheldon will next say goodbye itself in back-to-back -back episodes airing on May 16th, as well as facing the tasks of saying goodbye to the rest of the cast, though its spin-off, Georgie and Mandy's first marriage, is set to air this fall on CBS, and send Sheldon off to his future at Caltech. The way we brought this show to an end here, it's emotional, says executive producer Steve Holland. I was emotional doing it. It's emotional for the characters. It's emotional watching it back. Here, Holland also shares how the writers figured out how, and when, to portray George's death, how Barber took the news about his character dying and what other information from The Big Bang Theory needed to be honored. It's always challenging, and I think endings are always really difficult. There's a lot of expectation on the endings, and at some point, you have to put aside what you think the audience wants to see and just focus on the ending you think is good, and then hope that they're also going to appreciate it. Going into this season was a little extra challenging because we had a strike-shortened season, so instead of 22, we had to get everything we wanted to hit and get it in 14 episodes. But I don't think there's anything we wanted to get to that we didn't get to at the end of the day, since you've been asked about it for the last seven years, planning George's death, did you guys know this is how you wanted to play it? Or was it something you kept going back and forth on? We always knew we were going to address it this season. We always knew we were going to get to the funeral this season. And we always knew that George's death would happen off screen, that we didn't want to witness it. It was just a question of when. There was a version of this, as we talked about it earlier on, where it would have been, the finale would have been the death and the funeral. I think it was Chuck, Laurie, executive producer, who said, this is mostly a positive, uplifting show. Let's not leave the audience deep in their grief. Let's watch the family start to piece itself back together, and let's end with a little hope. So then that reshifted when we were going to do it. And then also, just because we know some people are expecting it, I know there's a lot of talk of whether it's going to happen or not going to happen, but people who know Big Bang are expecting it. We wanted to do it in a way that was hopefully a little surprising. So that's why it happens at the end of episode 12, we thought maybe we can catch people off guard. Even though they know it's going to come, maybe they won't see it coming then. Touching on Big Bang, we've known that George died when Sheldon is 14, but were there other details from the show that you had to live up to? It was pretty much just his age. And to be honest, even Big Bang canon isn't entirely consistent. It got more consistent. We know it was 14 and we know that Sheldon goes to Caltech right afterwards and leaves Georgie and the rest of the family behind grieving. Those were the two pieces that we knew. Was it a tough conversation to have with Lance Barber, since he knew this could be coming? He's known since the beginning of the show that George Sr. had an expiration date. We slowed time down a little bit. Like, we extended it because the kids, our actual cast members Reagan and Ian, are 16 in real life. We stretched one year out into a couple seasons to keep Lance alive as far as long as we could. But he always knew this was coming. And I think also it being the last season made it a little easier on him that there wasn't going to be seasons going forward that he wasn't going to get to be a part of, 
but he was great because he really wanted to be there. We really talked a lot about that. It was interesting how much work we put into a scene where nothing exciting happened, and we kept making sure that was the case. We thought a lot about the reality of the situation is that you don't recognize that these are big moments going into them. You only recognize that these are big moments in retrospect. And dad leaving for work is a thing that happens every day. There was no reason for anyone to stop and think, you know, this moment is special. We also thought that moving forward it left them with a little bit more regret that they didn't appreciate those moments, but it just really felt like that was very real. We even pulled out where no one says goodbye to him. We kept pulling things away, from the scene, so no one had a moment. For Missy, he offers her a ride to school and she says she'll take the bus. Sheldon doesn't even look up. Mary's on him about making sure he's not going to be late later on.